Uh, some news from around the National Football League. Last night, NFL media reported that Dolphins will sign Calais Campbell to a one-year deal. Who the player, like just the quarterback on the field, you sit there and say, no-brainer, pay him. When you look at the player the last two seasons, he's top five in everything that matters when it comes to quarterback play. For them to even be playing this game and haven't come to a deal yet, I don't understand what the issue is. What message are they sending to him? While Odell Beckham Jr. is not, you know, 2014, 15 Odell Beckham Jr., he's still a productive wide receiver who is very useful on third down. You saw that in Baltimore, has a low drop rate, and actually still ranks uh, amongst the top receivers in the NFL in terms of production on slant. You know, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the Miami Dolphins at this point because this team, man, really is putting together a great offseason, and with what they just went out and did, they're starting to look even better. They, of course, as we all know, added a bunch to their offense, not only through free agency and the draft to get better, but they also added a bunch to their defense and just recently they went out and added an elite player in a position where they were extremely weak that I think really is going to change everything. But before we get into why I actually believe that, if you like Miami Dolphins content just like this, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Dolphins videos for the remainder of this offseason. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Miami Dolphins, this team, of course, is coming off a season where they won 11 football games and made the playoffs, but of course fell short in the first round of the Kansas City Chiefs, which is obviously not what any Miami Dolphins fan wanted to see. Now, I will give them the benefit of the doubt and just go ahead and say they were extremely injured, and if they would have just had a few more guys healthy, they might have won that game, but we can't go back and change anything, so the Dolphins had to move on to the offseason and find a way to get better, so this same situation didn't happen in the future, and man, Oh man, I think they just did that. I would usually start on the offensive side of the ball, but just recently, the Miami Dolphins went out and signed that guy, Calais Campbell, to the defense to try to help fill out this interior and really round out this defense as a whole. The Dolphins this offseason, of course, moved on from Christian Wilkins because they didn't want to sign him to a big-time contract. And while Christian Wilkins is a great player and he's going to be a big loss for the Miami Dolphins, I don't hate the decision too much because they didn't want to put so much money in one person. And I really do think Calais Campbell is a great replacement for a one-year stint. He might only have one or two years left in the tank due to his age, but he can still play at a really high level when he's healthy, and he showed us that all of last season with what he was able to do on the Atlanta Falcons. He put up some pretty solid numbers, and he was exactly what the Falcons wanted to have on the interior of that defensive line, and I expect him to be the same thing for the Dolphins next season in the spot of Christian Wilkins. I think he's going to bring a veteran presence to this defensive line that is desperately needed, and with all the talent that's around him, I think his life is going to be pretty easy and he's not going to have too much stress on him, which is going to allow him to play even better. I mean, to start, you also added Shaquille Barrett this offseason to give you another edge rotational guy who's going to come in and play really good for you. And you already had Nick Chubb and Jalen Phillips who are coming off tremendous seasons. And if they both didn't get injured, they would have had even better seasons, which shows you just how talented these guys really are. And considering they're both young, I love to see a veteran guy coming in that can teach them a few things to make them even better. And when all of these guys are healthy and they're playing on the field together, I really do think this defensive line is going to be one of the best units in the entire league, and I don't think you can argue against that. They're going to be able to get after the passer at a pretty consistent rate, and they're also going to be really, really good against the run, and that's all you can ask a defensive line to do. Not to mention, you still have Zach Sealer, who's a really solid player, and you went out and added Neville Gallimore to help really round out the interior, and now with Calais Campbell, you're going to be able to rotate guys in and out to keep everyone's legs fresh. Now, what's so crazy about this is that even if the Dolphins just had the defensive line that I just named, they would be extremely good. But they also went out in the draft in the first round and took that guy, Chop Robinson, who's an absolute athletic freak, which is another threat they have on the defensive line. I know, I know he's a little bit raw and he might take a little bit of time to develop, but he is going to come in and at the minimum be an elite pass rusher due to what he brings physically. And that is just going to allow this defensive line to be so versatile and what they can do. And it's going to allow the defensive coordinator to call a bunch of crazy stuff to catch the opposing offense off guard. I think we're going to see them be top five, if not number one, in sacks in the NFL next year, and if they do that, everything else on the defense is going to follow. Speaking of everything else on the defense, we also got to talk about the rest of it, because they are what's going to round out this defense, and it starts with this linebacker room and the fact that they went out and added Jordan Brooks, who is obviously one of the best linebackers in the league. I know a lot of people don't talk about this guy, but if you watch his tape, you can see pretty easily how good of a player he is, and the fact he's going to be paired with a guy in Anthony 
Anthony Walker Jr., who you also added, just makes up a duo that I think is going to be really dominant, especially when they're playing behind a great defensive line. Every time you see a linebacker move from a bad defensive line to a good defensive line, you see his production go up, and that's because a good defensive line makes their life easier, and that's exactly what I think we're going to see happen. And not to mention, you already had David Long Jr. on this team, who's another great linebacker that you're probably going to see production go up, which helps make a full front seven of guys that are going to be extremely dominant, not only against the run, but also against the pass, like I said earlier. I think you could argue this is one of the best front sevens in all of football, and then to pair with that, you also have a great secondary, because you already got that guy, Jalen Ramsey, who's one of the best cornerbacks in all of football, as we all know, and you went out in free agency and signed that guy, Kendall Fuller, who's also a great corner, especially as a corner number two, which makes up an amazing corner duo, which I think was an upgrade from what they had last year, and as your corner number three, you have Cater Kohu in the nickel spot, which I think is a great player to have in the nickel spot with everything he brings to the table. I think we're going to see this corner room be used in a lot of versatile ways, especially since you have a safety room that consists of Javon Holland, who played like one of the best safeties in the league last year, and you went out and signed another elite safety in Jordan Poyer, who might be getting older, but can still play at a really high level to pair with Javon Holland, which is kind of unfair in my opinion. So you have a defensive line that's going to get after the passer, they have a complete front seven that's going to be able to do everything you ask them to, and they have a secondary that I think is going to be completely locked down, and that right there sounds like one of the best defenses in the league. And man, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you pair that defense that I think is 100% complete with an offense that's also almost complete, that's when a team really has a chance to win a Super Bowl, and I think that's exactly what the Miami Dolphins have. They of course have Tua, who I think gets underrated at times, even though he puts up great numbers year in and year out, and I think the playoff success is going to come with the more snaps that he plays, and then when you look at everything the Dolphins have put around him, I think you might be able to argue they have the best weapon group in all of football as well, which makes them a pretty scary offense. You of course have the best receiver in the NFL, in my opinion, in Tyreek Hill, and I don't expect his production to slow down at all, and then to pair with him, you have the guy you just signed to an extension, who I think fully deserved it, and Jalen Waddle, who would probably be a receiver one on the majority of the teams in the NFL. The only reason he isn't on the Dolphins is because you have Tyreek Hill ahead of him. And then to go along with that, you also went out and signed a great receiver to be your third option in Odell Beckham Jr., who we just saw have a pretty solid season, even though he's getting up there in age. I know he's had injuries in his past, but I feel like he had a big impact on what the Ravens were able to accomplish last year. And if he's your receiver number three instead of your receiver two or number one, that is a perfect spot for him at his current age. And if you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, he is still going to find ways to get open, and I think we're going to see that happen quite often. There's no way you're going to be able to guard all three of these guys at the same time, especially when you consider the Dolphins added Jonu Smith at the tight end position, who's another guy that can get open one-on-one, -on -one, especially if it's a linebacker guarding him, and I think we're going to see Mike McDaniel use a lot of these strengths against opposing defense's weaknesses. We've already seen him be one of the most creative coaches in all of football, and I think we're going to see him up that even more going forward, especially when you consider the offensive line looks better than it did last year, especially with the addition of Patrick Paul in the second round, and when you consider you have Raheem Mostert, Devon A-Chain, and the addition of Jalen Wright in the running back room. I fully expect this run game to be one of the best in the NFL, just like it was last year, and I expect this passing attack to be even better than it was last year, and that says a lot considering they were already one of the best passing attacks last season. I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be one of the best overall offenses, and to pair with that, you have a defense that just added the one missing piece I think they had in Calais Campbell, and that rounds out this full team to be in my opinion, a true contender that nobody is going to want to play against in 2024.